I'm James Johnson, and you're watching Niagara Pro Tips. Today we're going to take a little time to talk about web charts and embedding those web charts into PX views and how we can do that kind of in the most uh, robust and, and easy way using relative words or, uh, or other mechanisms. And in this case, I have a, a JStation, JS8000, uh, which has a, a BACnet driver underneath it. And uh, there are some air handler devices. And these air handler devices have points. And various points here uh, have, um, you know, history extensions uh, on those points. And I have some PX views assigned to the air handler here. Uh, a, a graphic and responsive, but the main one I'm thinking about right now is this AHU chart view that I have on here. So uh, take a look at the AHU chart view. And right now it just has a header and, you know, the framework here of what I want it to, the UI to look like. It doesn't have a web chart in it yet. And there's really a couple ways that we can do that. We can drag one of those points in and choose Workbench View and, and create a web chart. Uh, or we can just simply uh, open the web chart palette and drag in a chart. And then we can position it uh, where we want to in the PX view. And uh, obviously, I'm not haven't specified any ords yet. Uh, so that's what we need to do is, is specify some ords here. And in order to do that, uh, one of the easiest ways really is to just specify slot colon here in the ORD for the WB view binding. And by specifying this to relative slot colon, uh, what we'll notice is that the, the uh, workbench uh, will, or the UI will resolve that device and then look underneath it for any points that have history extensions or end colon history tags, which map to historical data, which maybe has been important via the Niagara network or so forth. So it just automatically pulls up the first 10 that it finds. And that, that in itself is typically going to be the easiest thing to do unless you have a case where I don't want to see all 10 for some reason um, or I've got more than 10 and I need to be specific about which 10 that I'm showing. In that case, there's probably a couple of different options that we can uh, do. Uh, one of those is to go in and instead of just using a relative slot colon uh, view binding, we could do something like slot colon point slash uh, room temp. And that's going to Instead of showing all five histories that uh, you know it saw as being available there, it's going to show just a specific history, and uh, we can add multiple WB view bindings here. So instead of just having that one, we can click on the Add Binding, select the Workbench WB view binding here, and then uh, we'll get another uh, you know board property here that we can configure using something like slot colon points uh, slash room uh, co2 uh, is another one that should be there and uh, I could even do uh, the uh, room humidity maybe you know so there's several um, several histories here on supply temp room temp room humidity and that sort of thing so maybe I'll just add uh, add one more here so another WB view binding and uh, then it'll be uh, slot colon points slash room humidity. So we can add up to uh, 10. So any the web charts can display up to 10 histories at a time. And we can add uh, up to 10 of those there. And uh, it'll render uh, those uh, those particular bindings. Now, in this case, uh, these are no longer um, uh, or they are relative bindings there, I guess, is what I should say. And uh, so that would work for any of the PX views that, uh, you know, we're uh, connecting to or assigning this to. And there's another option, though, uh, which might give us a little bit more flexibility as well, which is saving or exporting a chart file. So instead of using uh, relative ORDs here, what we can do is specify um, the actual ORDs here, maybe, uh, to show you what this would look like. So th these will be all... Um, absolute ORDs here instead of relative ORDs, right? So depending on how you go about building up the, the chart view, if you're dragging and dropping things out and it's just um, assigned the actual absolute ORDs to them or something like that, you don't have to necessarily go through and make those ORDs relative. Um, one of the options is that we can export this chart file 
and when we export the chart file we have an option of relative or uh, absolute ords and then you can change the uh, the name of the chart file here uh, to something different if you want to and I'll just leave it what it is for right now uh, just hit OK there and what that does is it saves a chart file here uh, under my charts directory and I could have named it you know whatever I wanted to obviously and you really can't look at, you can look at that chart file there it won't load um, you can look at the text file editor and uh, search for like slot colon and we'll see that the the actual ord um, there uh, that's saved into the chart file is actually a relative ord so what that allows me to do is in the uh, in my chart view here and I can uh, drag in this chart the save chart file in and then use the workbench view and choose chart and that will embed that save chart file into my PX view and it will resolve those relative ords to uh, match up to whatever device that that PX view is assigned to. So that's three ways to go about uh, using the relative ords, uh, you know, either slot colon uh, or multiple WB view bindings with slot colon points and the point name or uh, embedding a saved chart file with relative ords. I personally like the multiple WB view bindings uh, because it works with uh, on-demand PX views, virtual uh, ords and stuff in the supervisor. Uh, but the uh, w or the save chart file can give you some flexibility maybe about making some changes to the how the chart's going to render uh, by default and we'll go through and talk more in another uh, video about how to customize some of those settings anyway with the uh, uh, with the options as well thanks for taking the time to watch this video Thank you.